Coil of Prep. Um, we're going to record the session just for uh, ah, potentially sharing it later. Um, we have a few other people here that I'd like to introduce, or they can introduce themselves. Please go ahead, guys. So I think we should begin with Lev right now. We're going to get started, please. And if you could please introduce yourself for a moment. Sure. Go right. sure. Thanks, Francis. Uh, thanks, Tamir. Um, my name is Lev Sirdoff. I'm the director of the Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College. Uh, my most impressive attribute are our graduates and our current students who will introduce themselves after me. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited. Okay, go right ahead. So All right. Friends, on. Go ahead, sure. Sumaita. Is that okay? Sure. We're going to go next. Yeah. Bye. So thank you, Lev. Thank you for being here. Um, Lev is the director of the entire Macaulay Honors program, so we're really happy that he's here. Um, my name, as I mentioned before, is Tamir. I graduated from the Macaulay Honors program in 2019 at Hunter College, actually. And I actually graduated Forest Hills High School in 2015. So it sounds like a long time ago, but it feels like yesterday. Um, and so now I'm here talking to you guys as Forest Hills students. Hopefully, you guys are thinking about applying to Macaulay Honors. Uh, and that's something we're going to go over from, from top to bottom today. Um, right now, currently, I'm a fourth year medical student at Hofstra Medical School, and I'm going to be graduating to become a physician in May. So I'll let the other two uh, speakers here introduce themselves, and then we'll get started. Hi, my name is Samaitha. I graduated from Macaulay Honors at Hunter College just last year, and currently I work as a writer at CUNY, which is what Macaulay is part of. And I'm really excited to learn all about you and tell, teach you about Macaulay. Hey everyone, my name is Jan. Um, I also graduated from the Macaulay Honors College at Hunter College last year in 2021. And before that, I graduated from Stuyvesant High School in 2017. So i um, super excited to be here. I've been working with Pollard for a while now and I'm on my way to applying to medical school. And I hope you guys have an amazing webinar today. We're really excited to tell you all about the amazing programs and opportunities that Macaulay offers. And we really hope that you apply to the amazing program that CUNY has made available for all of us. Tamir is going to lead the webinar. He's going to start with a slideshow, but I want to take a moment to let everyone listening know that we are all children of immigrants. Um, my parents are, I'm actually a first gen. My parents immigrated from Moldova, from Kishinev about 1977. I was born here. All I heard about was the American dream, which included education. And I do want to share that with everyone. So I definitely got the familial guilt trip of how important, how valuable, and how many sacrifices my parents and my family and my extended family and my grandparents and every single person I've ever had any relationship to, what a big deal it is for me to receive an education in the United States. So please keep in mind, we are all children of immigrants. Um, is it okay if we all take a moment just to share where we're from? Because we are all from Queens as well, collectively. Um, go ahead. So we'll go Jan, Sumaitha, Tamir. Go. So my parents both immigrated here from Bangladesh and I was born and raised in Astoria, Queens. My parents also immigrated here from Bangladesh and I was also born and raised in Queens. And I am an immigrant myself. I moved here from Israel when I was 14 years old, just before I started at Forest Hills High School. So probably a lot of you are either immigrants or parents or your parents are immigrants and uh, you're not from here and that's totally okay. And uh, just wanted to let you know them you know, Macaulay is definitely a place that accepts all these kind of like backgrounds and, and people. So uh, we will definitely get to talk about all of that. Um, so what I want to do now is- Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait sorry, minute. Let I, go. Out. I mean, Jesus, what am I, chop liberal <laughs> here? Uh, uh, my, my mom and I immigrated here from uh, Russia. Um, and unlike all of you who are sitting around in Queens, I'm sitting in the great borough of the Bronx, the only part of the, of the city that's contiguous to the United States. And I just want to remind all of you that we're going on for higher education. Um, I'm the first lawyer also in terms of, you know, with my, my mother is not a lawyer, father not, definitely not. Um, I didn't even know any lawyers growing up. So that's kind of how it was. So um, I knew of lawyers and I knew people who were, but I actually did not personally know. So I do want to tell you that it was really cool. I didn't even know um, what a JD MBA was until my first year of law school. So I had quite a lot of life changing experiences. I'm very grateful for where Queller Prep is today. I'm very grateful to have everyone here today and to let you know this is a very meaningful webinar and a special moment. Go ahead, Samir. Awesome, thank you, Francis. So I'm gonna share my screen now. I'm gonna share a few slides with you guys about the program. Um, 
All right, so I believe everybody can see this. Okay, perfect. So um, we're going to talk about this in Jen and uh, Sumaita, if you want to chime in at any moment. Oh, and I wanted to remind everyone, um, please, at any moment, if you have any questions, you can um, leave or unmute yourself or ask them in the chat. Um, and uh, we'll talk about them as we go. And if anybody can monitor the waiting room, I can't really see it at the moment. Yeah, uh, I can so definitely do that. Perfect. So chat and waiting room is on you, Francis. Perfect. Um, so we'll talk about the Macaulay Honors uh, Scholarship and what it is. Um, so we already introduced ourselves a little bit. All of us graduated from the Macaulay Honors Program, some of us earlier than others. And we have Lev here, who is the kind of the director of this entire program. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about what this program is, but you're not really 100% sure. Some of you probably know more than others, so we'll cover everything. Okay, so what is this uh, Macaulay Honors Program? So really, in a nutshell, this program is a program at CUNY Colleges that offers a merit-based full scholarship package that includes tuition, cultural passport, and access to the Opportunities Fund. And we'll talk about with what each of those uh, mean. But essentially, you can think of it as like a full merit-based scholarship package that includes these things. Um, and uh, we'll talk about specifically next, um, what are some of the perks that you uh, can get from you can expect from the Macaulay Honors Program. So you have internship and research opportunities at Macaulay, uh, you have advising and support, you have study abroad, and you have an opportunities fund, which we'll discuss. Uh, you'll have priority registration for classes, and you also have the NY, the New York City Cultural Passport, which we'll discuss as well. Uh, Sumaira and Jan, would you guys like to talk, touch on any of these points, uh, if you had any experience with them? Actually, Samira, let's just move through the okay. webinar, and then what we'll do is, is after you're done, Sure. I would love for Jan to do a deep dive um, on the actual email that was sent out. That would be so great. So she'll Perfect. do that. Next. All right, let's do that. So let's start by talking about, oops, um, I didn't mean to press that. Okay. All right, so this is what we what uh, Macaulay Harris calls a cultural passport. So essentially, it's this passport that uh, students get, uh, and it's a, a it's a special ID that gives you access to a, a lot of these kind of cultural um, uh, things that we have around New York City, either for free or for a super reduced price. Um, and all of these uh, listed here are available for you guys as Macaulay Honors students. And I, over the four years that I was a student at Macaulay Honors, got to experience so many of these uh, amazing kind of uh, attractions that we have throughout the city, all of them for free. So that's kind of like just a nice perk that you have from being a Macaulay student. Um, now, which schools are eligible to be part of the Macaulay Honors Program. So those schools are the nine that I listed here. Uh, it's Baruch College, Brooklyn, City College, uh, up uh, uptown in Manhattan, College of Staten Island, Hunter College, uh, John Jay College, uh, Lehman College, and Queens College. And all of these are CUNYs. So who should apply to the Macaulay Honors Program? If you go and Google the Macaulay Honors website, you'll see that they say that they recommend that students apply with a GPA of greater than 90 and an SAT of about greater than 200 is the recommendation. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about kind of like my experience with this and from students that I've seen and students that I've mentored and students who got in. Um, that's not always the case, right? So I don't want you to think that because you don't have high stats, you're not gonna be able to apply to Macaulay. Um, Macaulay is very well known to kind of consider the applicant as more than their stats. So they really, really like to see people who are involved in their uh, either community or in leadership positions or in sports or in, in any anything that you, you do longitudinally over the four years that is extracurricular. Those are the things that really matter a lot to Macaulay. So stats are definitely important, but not as much uh, as uh, these other things for Macaulay. Um, but again, definitely wanna make sure that you're competitive because we'll talk a little bit in a moment about how uh, competitive the program actually is. Um, so as I mentioned, students with extracurricular activities that show school involvement, leadership, commitment, dedication uh, are things that are super important for this program. So what is the application actually like? So uh, most of the Macaulay Honors College students take their courses at their home campus. So let's say if you get accepted to Macaulay at Hunter, then you're going to take most of your classes at Hunter. Um, so when you apply, that, that's important because when you apply, you're actually gonna uh, rank which school you wanna go to, which CUNY. So for me, for example, that was Hunter. So I put in the beginning that I'm gonna apply to Hunter, Macaulay, and that's, if you get accepted, that's usually the one that they're gonna accept you to. Sometimes they go to your second choice, but usually it's your first. Um, 
So you'll select six of eight, six of these eight campus choices for general admission and one campus for Macaulay. So what does that mean? When you apply to Macaulay, you automatically apply to the CUNYs, all of them. Um, so in case, let's say you don't get into Macaulay, they automatically consider you for the general CUNY application process. So you can apply to six of the eight CUNYs, but you have to choose one campus for the Macaulay. So Hunter, Baruch, Brooklyn, whatever it may be. So as I mentioned, your application is going to be sent to each of the six campuses you select for the general admission, but you, then you'll be reviewed for the Macaulay campus choice separately. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so what are the dates to apply? I think if uh, this is like one of the most important pieces of information on the slide, you if you are planning to apply, this is these are the dates that are important for you to remember. So by uh, by the application went live actually, and if you're a senior, for you it went live this uh, September first in 2022. The application deadline is not until November 16th of 2022, so it's actually coming up in in the uh, couple of weeks. Um, and then the hard deadline where all the documents, the letters of recommendation, the essays, everything is due. The hard deadline is by the 28th of uh, November. And then decisions come out on March 15th and you have to commit to the school or decide which school you want to go to by May 1st. All right, so let's talk about some statistics. Um, how many people apply? So in 2021, Macaulay received over 7,000 applications with only 520 places uh, in the entering class, meaning there's 520 positions across all the CUNYs that I listed. That gives it a 7.4% acceptance rate, which is comparable to a lot of Ivy Leagues. So I'm sure a lot of you knew that getting into Macaulay Honors is competitive, but uh, it's, it's super competitive. It's almost like as hard as getting into an Ivy League, right? So it's definitely not easy. These are how many spots are per school. So some of them are more than others. In Baruch, you have 100 seats per year. In Brooklyn, you have 80. Um, in City College, you have 80, and then so on and so forth. The smallest being John Jay and Lehman College at 20 per year, uh, and Hunter being the biggest at 120. So um, what do you actually need in order to apply? So first and foremost, you, of course, need your high school transcript. Um, you need your your SAT and ACT recently in the in the last couple of years. I don't know exactly which year, but they became optional. I, I, I don't remember if that was because of COVID or something else, but they became optional. Now, my recommendation, and I think I think I'll talk about this in the next slide. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about the SAT and ACT being optional in the next slide. Um, the next thing you need are extracurricular activities or your resume, essentially, like things you want to talk about outside of your academics. Like if you were in a band or if you were uh, in doing some leadership position, you're a president of a club. These things are super important. Community service, uh, personal initiative and leadership qualities. Then you're going to need uh, letters of recommendation from either teachers or people you've worked with outside of school. Uh, and then you're going to need to write two essays in order to uh, submit your application to Macaulay. And we'll go over those essays as well. And then we some some uh, campuses in Macaulay offer or they do they conduct interviews as well. We'll, we'll talk about that as well. So what does it mean? This is directly from the Macaulay Honors website. What does it mean to be test optional or have the AC, SAT and ACT be optional? So let's read this together. This is from the Macaulay website. Test optional means that applicants have the opportunity to submit, submit their standardized SAT or ACT exam scores to Macaulay for admissions, right? So it's option. Applicants can also opt out of submitting their SAT or ACT exam scores to Macaulay. And then they write this very important note. Applicants that feel their SAT or ACT scores could make a big difference in their application should definitely submit them. Applicants that believe they are academically strong and their SAT or ACT scores would not make a difference in the application can decide not to submit them. No matter which option applicants select, all applications will be evaluated equally. So what does this mean really? Um, what this means is that if your McCall, if your if your SAT or ACT scores are competitive, you want to use that to your advantage. You, if you if you have let's say a, a GPA that might not be as high or um, some some extracurricular activities that might not be as good, you need the SAT or ACT to work to your advantage to kind of make up for that difference, right? So this is a super important part of it. Now, if it were up to me, I would definitely submit the SAT and ACT. I would not necessarily look at it as optional. Um, it's kind of like the same. And I remember when I was applying to colleges. Um, uh, 
when I was a senior in high school, Harvard used to say that their Common App essay was optional. But nobody that ever um, did not submit their uh, essay to Harvard ever got in, right? So it's basically like you have to do it, even though it says it's optional. So I don't know if it's the same case here, but my recommendation would be to definitely try to do well on your SAT or ACT and submit that. And then they have this little thing here, students applying to Macaulay should have a recommended average of 90 and above. That's their words, not mine. So that's what they write. Um, okay. Do we have any questions so far? Anybody confused about anything? Anybody want clarification on anything? I think uh, I think we're good so far. All right, so we'll talk about kind of not going too much into it, but interviews, which colleges do require you to interview before you get admitted. These colleges are Hunter, John Jay, Lehman, and College of Staten Island. So what this means is that if you're applying to Macaulay at Baruch, or if you apply to Macaulay in Brooklyn, or if you apply to Macaulay at Queens College, they can just look at your application and you're not gonna have an interview. Whether it's, they accept you or they, or they reject you. But for these four colleges, they're gonna have to do an interview uh, in order to accept you. Uh, and I've gone through that and um, it's not that bad at all, but we they do those. Uh, and then these are the essays that you're, they're gonna be, that you're gonna be uh, writing if you're gonna be applying. The, this is the most updated version, so this is going to be the ones that are going to be applicable to most of you. Uh, so let's read them together. Essay number one is about you. So you have to select one of these two following prompts. The first one is, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application will be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. Now, if this prompt sounds familiar to you, that's because it's the very first prompt on the Common App essay that you used to apply to all the other colleges. Uh, and that's on purpose. They wanted to make it somewhat easier on you that you only have to really, uh, they can just basically take your Common App essay and use it here, right? So this is essentially the same as your Common App essay that you used to apply to all the other colleges, okay? Now, a different prompt that you can use for this instead of using the first one is tell us about an area or activity outside of academics in which you have invested a lot of time and effort. Tell us why, what did you learn, and how was it meaningful? Essentially, they're asking you to talk about an extracurricular activity that you've done in high school and kind of like describe it in detail and talk about it. Um, but I would definitely recommend going with the first prompt because it's essentially the same essay that you're going to be writing for your Common App. So why wouldn't you just use that for your Macaulay essay as well? Uh, especially since you're going to have to write the second essay here, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, so might as well make it easier for you. Write one essay for your Common App and one essay and use that same essay for Macaulay. And then essay number two is about your plans for college, and you have to discuss all these following questions. Um, so why do you want to go to an honors college? There are many benefits of being a Macaulay student, such as the Macaulay community, special courses, honors advisement, cultural passport, opportunities fund, and other financial benefits. Please describe how these features will shape you and your college experience, including what you expect to bring to the co college community and what you expect to get out of your college experience. So this is a fairly new question. I didn't have this question when I applied. Um, my questions were my questions were a little bit different, but these are the questions that are going to be applicable to most of you. And these essays are each 500 words, which is about two pages double spaced, one page single space, something like that. Um, so if you want to save that, you can save this. Uh, but also, this is on the Macaulay website. You can just Google Macaulay Honors College essays and this prompts, and this will come up. Um, so just to wrap it up, I wanted to talk about kind of like my experience applying to Macaulay um, and how my stats were and what I did essentially when I was at Forest Hills High School, like most of you guys. So my GPA was 96 unweighted and 101 weighted, you know, with all the honors curving and all of that. Um, my SAT score was out of 2400 at the time. So it was 2230 out of 2400 which if you convert it to a 1600 scale, like it is nowadays, it's 1500 out of 1600. So I know these stats sound like they are somewhat high. And for some of you, it might be like you're around that ballpark. Um, but I wanna say that I've known several, several people that have had really, really high stats and they did not get in. But I know several people that had much, much lower stats and they got in in the same year um, because they had so many extracurriculars and things that they can talk about and things that uh, made the application unique and stand out uh, aside from their grades. Um, 
So I see somebody wrote a question in the chat. If the student did not have extracurricular activity, will he be accepted in this program? So that depends. I mean, obviously, I can't say exactly if you will or not be accepted. Um, but gen generally, um, Lev, you're unmuted. Would you, did you want to say something? Yeah, I think I could probably jump in and take that Please. one from you. Uh, look, uh, we understand that not all students uh, will be able to have uh, co-curricular experiences, extracurricular experiences. But I think it's very important to emphasize that any experience you have outside of the classroom is a co-curricular or an extracurricular experience. So whether you babysat your family, your siblings, whether you've assisted grandma, uh, whether you've worked in the family shop or have uh, helped in a neighborhood organization, all of those things should be listed as an extracurricular or co-curricular activity. It's important to show that not only are you a good student, but you're also a committed and civically minded individual. That's the kind of leadership we look for in our program. Absolutely. Um, and just to add to that, I remember on one of my Macaulay essays, I spoke about how much I enjoy playing guitar. Um, and that's not typically an extracurricular activity that you consider to be leadership or, you know, any of those things, but it's something that I'm sure that uh, the admissions team appreciated since I got in, but um, I think that it doesn't have to be a traditional sense of like, like what I wrote here is I was part of the um, We the People mock trial team at Forest Hills High School, which I hope is still running. Uh, I tutored at Quella Prep. So these are kind of like the extracurriculars that I did. I was the vice president of the chemistry club. I took some AP courses, but I also wrote a lot of things that I did that were just hobbies and interests and things that um, just normal people do, you know, normal people spend time on and things that are meaningful to you, things that you can talk about. Uh, outside of school, right? Because we want to essentially at Macaulay Honors, they want to make sure that you're a person that can contribute to their community and a person that can be more than just their grades on paper. Okay. Um, so with all these stats and all of this, uh, the, all these extracurriculars, I applied to Hunter uh, and the pre-med track. Uh, I got interviewed and then I finally got accepted. Um, so my my this is kind of like my timeline. I went to Forest Hills from 2011 to 2015, and then I went to Macaulay Honors from 2015 to 2019, and then now I'm in Hofstra Medical School between 2019, hopefully graduating in 2023 this year. And I've tutored the Qual Prep ever since I was a junior in high school, so it's been a very long time. I'm very happy to kind of like I've gone through so many of these um, kind of like helping people with applications and writing essays and things like that. So um, definitely, um, you know, happy to take any questions at this point and kind of see what uh, people more want to know about the program, about our experiences. Um, and even we have Lev here that can potentially answer a few questions as well. So does anybody have any questions? We can open the floor for a few minutes. You guys can chat. I also want to remind everyone listening, we are children of immigrants. Like there was straight up no one to tell us, to educate us, to guide us, to direct us. I, I think, I, I mean, Tamir, I think it's fair to say we had sub zero because we had to learn everything on our own. And this was so incredibly difficult. So this is a really special moment. And in many ways, Zoom has actually been wonderful in terms of information access, because look at where we are now. We're able to communicate and we're able to, you know, facilitate a conversation about what it means to get into a college full of scholarship. And I am telling you right now, there was absolutely none of this when I was applying to college. It was like reverse help. Um, and I definitely want to chime in on that. And Tamir, thank you so much, because I also want to add, Tamir was always just working at Queller Prep, tutoring a college student. I mean, juggling so much and look at how many barriers. I really just want to compliment you and I want to commend you. Um, Jan, is it okay if you could, uh, from this point on, can you please go um, quickly? Can you just go into the email that we sent out? If you could just go through any pieces of information so that we can okay. just go through the email, if we could share screen with that. Thank you, Francis. Just real quick, we have a couple questions in the chat. Love, did you want to say anything? Yeah, let me just get in. My internet's a little jumpy, so I, while, sure. I'm, uh, while I have a good signal, let me just jump in on a couple of points. Uh, <laughs> first, I just want to emphasize we are SAT optional. However, if you're planning to apply to Macaulay and Hunter, we encourage the SAT to be displayed, uh, partly because we don't want you to be the judge of what is good, bad, or ugly. Uh, if you took the SAT or the ACT, please report your score. Uh, as Tamir pointed out, uh, in our selection process, the selection process does not depend on your SAT. 
So please submit the score. Uh, that will be uh, very much appreciated. Uh, secondly, uh, we will review these things. Uh, and once you are deemed review eligible, uh, you will be invited to interview if you are review eligible. And since you are all here, I'll just tell you that the first round of interviews will be starting the week of January 9th and will run the duration of that week. So if you are planning to travel, please don't travel if you're applying to Macaulay at Hunter and make yourselves available during the week of January 9th. Uh, and I'm sure that Sumaida, Jan and Tamir will talk about their experiences. Uh, but fundamentally, we are looking for people who are great members of the community, uh, who are uh, people who are looking to engage with the city and with our state. And given that we'll be coming out of the pandemic, we'll need a lot of folks uh, to help us in many, many ways going forward. So please don't limit yourself and your potential uh, by saying, oh, I don't think I'm competitive. Send your papers in prepare to interview, put your best foot forward. And again, we are a great, diverse, dynamic community. 30% uh, of our students uh, are of Hispanic and African-American background, 30% are Asian, 30% are white, and 10% are choosing not to disclose, but it's a diverse urban population where 80% are children of immigrants or first gen. So please, please, please give us as much information as you possibly can. Uh, and throw your hat in the ring. You'll be better for it because it is a full ride, which means you don't have to engage in indentured servitude just because of college debt afterwards. Thank you right. so much for sharing that. Thank Francis, you. Francis, would you Thank like to? Encouragement. Would you like to say the questions to after we go over the email, or would you like um, me to answer Tamir, them now? Tamir, can you actually can you answer the questions now? Sure. Is that there okay? looks like yeah. There's about five or six questions in the chat. Yeah, um, go right ahead. Sure. So the first one says. Um, can you uh, explain again what the one campus selection means? Can you gain admission to a CUNY college but get denied um, in the one campus review round? So essentially, just to, to clarify again, when you apply to Macaulay, you choose essentially one campus that you're going to go uh, for, for your Macaulay experience. So for me, that was Hunter. For, for CU, it might be Brooklyn College or Baruch. You choose one. But when you do that, when you submit the CUNY application, you also get to choose six out of the eight CUNYs that you're going to apply to for the general admission, the non-Macaulay admission. Um, so you get to choose one Macaulay school, but you can apply to all of these non-Macaulay uh, program schools. So you can apply to Hunter and Baruch and, and Queens for the general admission, but you can only choose one for Macaulay. Okay, next question. Can you explain what you mean by you apply to one school? Oh, so I just explained that as well. Um, is there a truth that Hunter is the hardest Macaulay program to get into as opposed to Queens? I don't think any of them are necessarily easier to get into, but I will say that I know a lot of students, maybe they say that because Hunter has an interview process that makes it a little bit more challenging for some students is my experience from what I hear. Um, but Lev, I think wants to chime in here. <laughs> our, our, our acceptance rate is 4.8%. So oh, all right. <laughs> um, I, I hate to tell you this, but uh, it is the most competitive in getting in. Uh, I will just say this, the rewards are well worth the risk, uh, largely because Hunter, in addition to Macaulay, will accept out of the school into other honors cohort programs that are at Hunter College that in some cases will offer dorming. Uh, and that is a huge, huge benefit. I will also point out is if you're interested in pre-medical education, just like <laughs> a number of the panelists here today are pursuing medicine, are six year average of getting kids into medical school of those who qualified for a committee letter is roughly 96%. And for the last two years, it's at 100%. So if you are dead set on being a doctor, and as much as I want to see English majors, and if you are an English major, you're pretty much a diversity admit, please, uh, you know, consider Hunter, because again, we have great partnership with Memorial Stone Kettering, uh, Cornell, you're, you're, the dorm is right next to Bellevue and NYU. So you're in a good, great place to start your medical career uh, with Hunter Macaulay, but certainly all other majors should apply because we would like to shake things up a little bit uh, academically because again, not that we hate doctors. And I think the one benefit when I finally get older and I'm ready to meet the maker uh, is I'll, they'll roll me in and I'll know whoever is operating on me. But um, by all means, if you're an English major, <laughs> you're interested in other things, please apply. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for adding that. That's so informative because I think a lot of students um, shy away 
from applying to Macaulay, there is quite a large conversation about how it is a pre-med track for so many students. So that's actually really, really good that you shared that with us. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. I actually wanted to jump in because I was Please. an English major on the pre-law track and actually Hunter College has a wonderful pre-law program and department. We also have the Roosevelt House, which is excellent for public policy and people who are interested in advocacy. So you do have um, dual interests at Hunter and I would very much highly encourage people interested in the humanities to check out Hunter. Although yes, pre-med there is wonderful. They definitely offer a lot more. Yeah. yeah Sorry, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that um, even though I was on the pre-medical track, I also ended up double majoring in psychology and economics. So both of those are social science um, subjects. And I think Hunter really does have a lot of well-rounded programs that you guys can look into. So don't be afraid to apply, even if you're not looking to go into the pre-med, um, pre-medical studies. But yeah, go ahead, Tamir. Thank you. Yeah, so definitely look at which kind of like school you want to go to. It's important. Obviously, Hunter is a much bigger pre-med presence than other schools, etc. So definitely you can uh, kind of like think about which what you want to get out of your college experience. Um, so the next question here, um, if Macaulay Honors is as competitive as many top colleges, what are some of the reasons that students will choose to go to Macaulay over these top schools? So as I mentioned, there's so many benefits to Macaulay. Um, I think the biggest one is that it's a full scholarship program that you don't have to worry about payment. If payment is not a problem for you, then that's amazing. But for, I think, the majority of people that uh, apply to college, it's it's super, super uh, important to, to worry about kind of like, where are we going to, how are you going to pay for this? You know, having no loans is amazing. Uh, especially as a person who's on the other side of, almost on the other side of my education, coming out of education with no loans is an absolute blessing. Um, other benefits that I mentioned, you get uh, advisement. Uh, I had an advisor throughout my four years in Macaulay that really took me through step-by-step step ev everything that I needed from my first day to my last day. I also get priority registration for classes, which is super important when you're applying for classes you don't run out of space you get to register before everyone else so there's so many of these little perks but i think really the biggest one is the scholarship um okay um can people from outside the high school send recommendation letters directly to the admissions office so you you submit your your recommendation letters to the application the application generates a link it sends it out to the to the letter writer and they submit it on your behalf Okay, so they don't submit it directly to the admissions office, you submit it to the application. Um, somebody asked that did coming from Macaulay Honors help you get into med school? Absolutely. Macaulay Honors is such a prestigious program that's recognized um, uh, nationally. And I was it was a huge talking point in my medical school interviews uh, and people were really impressed. And it definitely makes a huge difference when you apply or, or try to kind of pursue professional uh, degrees. Will you be considered for general admission in the school you apply to for Macaulay Arms? Yes. So if you choose to apply to Macaulay at Hunter, you are still going to be, if you, let's say, get rejected for Macaulay at Hunter, you're still going to be considered for, for the general admission at Hunter College. Um, I read that the Macaulay Honors Program includes rigorous classes. Can you explain what that means? Yeah. So like any other college, we have obviously rigorous classes. Um, you can take classes as difficult or as easy as you'd like. Um, Hunter College has, has, I think, excellent professors, excellent programs. I can only speak to the pre-med uh, courses, and I also was a math major, so I can speak to the math classes as well, but I think both of those programs were fantastic. I don't think they're any necessarily rigorous than uh, other schools. I think it's on par, um, but the Macaulay Honors students usually take classes that uh, could in could be intertwined with students that are not from Macaulay. So it doesn't mean that just because you're in Macaulay, you're only in classes with Macaulay honor students. You're gonna be in classes with non-Macaulay students as well. Um, I wanted to chime in and also talk about Please. the four seminars that we take that I think is a little bit unique to the Macaulay program. You get to take four big seminars every single year, um, every semester for the first two years that focus on New York City. So one focuses on the arts, another on urban studies, another on science, another on sociology. And it's a great introduction to a lot of different um, disciplines. Even if you're pre-med, you might be introduced to the humanities, you might be introduced to sociology and advocacy. So it's a really great way to diversify our interests. And I do think those courses are a little bit more rigorous because they're special honors courses that only Macaulay students get to take. And the professors leading those courses have amazing backgrounds and amazing experience. 
Um, I believe there are also some Macaulay specific courses that are um, administered in the Macaulay building where people from all um, CUNY campuses can actually go and take those classes. So you'll have the opportunity to meet others and take some really like uh, interesting classes. Like I remember this one semester there was um, a researcher on, I believe, astrophysics who would work at the American Museum of Natural History teaching a class at Mac the Macaulay Building. And those classes are only available to Macaulay students. So these classes are definitely um, opportunities for you to kind of indulge in these interests that you have academically, and they aren't really available anywhere else. And yes, they'll definitely be at that higher, more rig rigorous level, but you guys will definitely gain a lot from these classes. Thank you. I see somebody is raising their hand. Uh, would you like to unmute and ask a question? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I just want to make myself clear in the question. I'm not sure if I would type it well. Um, so you can apply. I, I wasn't very clear. So you apply to one Macaulay program, for example, Hunter College. Now, if you don't get into that, can you still get into Hunt, into the Macaulay program, let's say at Queens College, if that was listed number two? or it's hit or miss, either it's your number one Macaulay or you get no Macaulay's, is that how it works? Yes, so it's usually, they, they consider you for the application, they consider your application for Macaulay in general. Um, they say, well, is, is it, they, okay, let, let's say you, you list number one Hunter, number two Queens. Uh, if you don't get into Hunter, it's not like they say, okay, let's consider him for Queens. It's essentially like either it's a hit or miss, you get in or you don't. Um, and they essentially, it's always like you're gonna be your first choice. It's not like they're gonna to go to your second choice. I don't think that ever happens, um, but it's it's hit or miss, like you said before. It's not like they consider you for Hunter and then for Queens and then for City. Uh, so so Macaulay's definitely hit or miss like that. Um, so definitely give a, a lot of consideration to what you're putting as your first choice when you're applying for Macaulay. And then the last question I see here is, can I apply for a pre-med program in the City College of New York and in Macaulay? Yes, so you can do a pre-med pre curriculum, I'm pretty sure in like most of these colleges and City College, uh, yes, there is a pre-med curriculum there as well. If you have any more questions, you can leave them in the chat and then we'll, we'll go over them at the end of this kind of like little presentation that we have for you guys now. So thank you so much for your questions. Leave more in the chat if you have them. And I'll give the floor to uh, our co-hosts who will go over this part. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to scroll through this email with you guys. We have a very um, in-depth presentation of what the application entails. We'll just go over some more key points. So some dates to keep in mind. Remember that the application is due by 6 p.m. on November 16th. So the deadline is definitely creeping up. And all of your do documents will be due on November 28th, also by 6 p.m. Um, these dates are different from most of your general um, common app um, deadlines, so keep them in mind. Um, so included in the email, we have our brochure. You guys can go ahead, click on that, take a look through it in your free time. Um, just some general details on what you can expect from Macaulay. Um, so as we go through this email, remember that you guys need to be sending official copies of your high school transcripts. Please reach out to your guidance counselors and your college counselors if you need more um, advice on how to do that. Um, we all talked about um, how important it is to consider sending your SAT scores to Macaulay um, or your SAT scores. Um, you definitely don't want to leave that out, especially since those students who choose to submit their scores and score on the higher end of the spectrum um, optimize their chances of getting in. So please keep that in mind and do submit your scores. They can only help you um, given that your, your statistics are uh, in the general area that Macaulay uh, operates in. So keep in mind that Macaulay op applicants need two letters of recommendation. Remember to choose um, recommenders who know you well. They can be from classes that you've taken. Um, I believe, I'm actually, so yeah, they're from classes that you've taken, um, I believe you can add additional recommendation letters from let's say like supervisors, whether you are working part-time or you're doing research on the side or you, play sports or um, have another skill or activity that you're working on, remember that your skills and your um, abilities are definitely uh, reflected um, upon in the letters. Sorry, let me just make my screen a little bit larger. How's that? Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. 
So um, we talked about the essays as well, you know that you have to include two pieces of writing, each should be around 500 words long. Um, both of them have to be submitted, not the, uh, they have to be submitted on the date that your documents are due. So November 28th at 6 p.m. There is a non-refundable $65 application processing fee. And um, it doesn't matter which CUNY campus you apply to, as long as you're applying to the Macaulay program at any of the CUNY campuses, you have to make sure you're able to um, submit that um, fee. So um, you're always encouraged to include other supporting material, whether that is a resume, um, you know, a writing sample, um, something that you might have won an award for, anything that shows that you have parts of your personality, experience, and um, I guess. Um, identity that you can showcase through your application, what, basically persuade the um, admission members at why you should be a student at Macaulay. Uh, convince them that you have the background, you have the skills, you have the abilities, and show them that you have a lot of interests and that Macaulay will be supporting you through your academic journey in college. So um, we talked a little bit about the essay questions. Um, remember that the first one is about you. Uh, Tamira talked about how it's basically the um, common app question that uh, you can kind of gear towards Macaulay and write a little bit more about your background, your interests, um, or you can tell Macaulay about an area or activity outside of academics in which you invested a lot of time and effort in, tell them why it was meaningful, what you learned, and maybe like what you plan on doing with it in the future. And then the second prompt is um, about your college plans. So why do you want to go to an honors college and what specific benefits at Macaulay will be helping you support your college career? Talk about maybe opportunities that are available at Macaulay that aren't available at other colleges. Talk about the um, specific Macaulay seminars. You can talk about, um, there are actually some scholarships within Macaulay on top of Macaulay's honors program um, that you can apply for. I was a Goldsmith scholar and that scholarship program is only available to Macaulay students. So I received a lot of guidance on doing um, applications for um, graduate school programs, other research programs, um, and the Macaulay advisor, which is separate from advisors at Hunter or your CUNY campus, they help you write these applications. So there are a lot of benefits to, you know, um, being a part of this program that other CUNY students at your campus won't have access to. So really do a deep dive into what, you know, opportunities you'll be getting. Of course, the, um, you know, a uh, full ride, free tuition, um, what, if you're going to Hunter, how the dorm would help you. Talk about the specific examples of um, benefits and opportunities provided by Macaulay that will make a difference in your life and why you specifically need them to excel in your college career. Um, um, I wanted to jump in really quickly yeah, about sure. essay number two. I think one tip that I found helpful for students applying is finding faculty members that have interest in the subject that you want to pursue and writing about how those faculty members' background or research can help you kind of blossom in your career. Um, we have special faculty only at Macaulay that, like Jan said, teach special courses at the Macaulay building. So I think that can help you set your application apart. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point. I think that um, making sure you include a sentence or two, don't just name drop, make sure you expand upon what you're talking about. So you can mention specific honors classes, specific honors professors, and talk a little bit about how their course or their studies would tie into your interests. Um, so yeah, let's move on to talking about the tuition and merit scholarship package. So as you know, Macaulay students are all offered um, free tuition, full a full merit scholarship, um, we talked about the cultural passport and the opportunities fund, whether you study abroad or do an internship um, while still while you're still here in New York, you will be um, supported by Macaulay. So these are great um, perks to have while in college and you want to make sure you take advantage of them and write about them in your essays. So um, we talked about Macaulay students being el eligible for the 100% scholarship. Um, but of course, make sure you complete your financial aid applications. So complete your FAFSA applications, your TAP, your, um, yeah, FAFSA and TAP are the main two that you need to complete for Macaulay or for CUNY in general. So 
um, included with your um, free um, education at Macaulay for your full term semesters, um, you have tuition that's covered for summer and winter sessions. That is a big reason why I was able to double major while also being on the pre-med track. If I didn't have these perks, I wouldn't have been able to graduate within the four years. Um, I ended up taking a bunch of summer classes and I think one or two winter classes. Um, and they are shorter, they are more dense than your uh, semester courses, but they're just as great. So take advantage of that. Um, I think general CUNY students do have to pay a different fee for the summer and winter sessions. Macaulay does um, cover a certain amount of credits for each semester. So um, take advantage of that as well. Um, so some conditions for summer tuition funding, all of this will definitely depend on where you're at in your studies and um, how much of like, for example, the um, core curriculum you've completed already, you're gonna have to talk to your Macaulay advisor about you know, what the next step should be in your specific um, academic journey. You're gonna be responsible for paying any tuition for credits um, that exceed the eight credit limit. This is for the summer. So Macaulay will cover. So for example, most of your courses are about I would say three to four credits um, worth. So if you're taking, if you wanted to take three three credit courses, that third class wouldn't count, but uh, it wouldn't be covered by Macaulay. So you wanna make sure you're falling within the limits. And then for winter, um, they cover not eight, but four credits. Winter courses are super, super short. Um, they're only a couple of weeks long. Summer courses are, are a little bit longer. So the credit system is kind of based on that. Um, but it's still a really good opportunity to have, you know, this um, extra perk available um, in order to help you kind of graduate on time, um, pursue that second major, pursue a minor, whatever it is that you're interested in that can kind of bolster your resume and your background and your application for whether, you know, you're pursuing graduate school next, medical school, um, applying to jobs, whatever it is, these all look great on your resume. So um, we just talked about the FAFSA and TAP applications. Make sure you guys complete those. Without them, you will not be able to maintain your scholarship package. They're critical to ensuring that you receive the um, tuition um, waiver that uh, Macaulay is able to provide you with. So um, both applications have already gone live. They're both open and um, you should have completed them by now. If you haven't done so, please do that as soon as possible. Remember that. Um, it should have been done by October 15th. So um, you also need to be declaring a major for TAP eligibility within 30 days of the, um, I believe, drop end period in your junior year. So what that basically, sorry, drop add period. What that basically means is that there is a cutoff date um, at which you will be able to either drop or add courses um, for the semester. So in your junior year, or by the time you have accumulated, I forgot, I think it's 60 credits, you have to be um, declaring a major. So make sure you guys kind of brainstorm, um, okay, what kinds of classes do I want to take freshman year and sophomore year to help me decide what major I want to declare? So keep that in mind. Don't um, try to delay uh, choosing a major or choosing options or general uh, subjects that you'd be interested in majoring in. So um, Macaulay, Macaulay also requires a character reference letter. Um, you want to ensure that you show that your character, your identity, your personality all aligns with Macaulay's, um, I guess, image of sh showcasing these brilliant, bright students who are able to be determined, be ambitious. You want to make sure that this letter is able to represent um, how I guess uh, you'll be able to use your background and Macaulay's resources to further not only your education, but everyone else's inclusive experience at Macaulay as well. So Macaulay will also fund experiential learning. Um, experiential learning is one of the pillars at Macaulay. Um, this is the opportunities fund that I was talking about earlier, whether you decide to go abroad or um, do research or do an internship, you will be receiving $1,500 to support those initiatives. So this is available to every single Macaulay student, no matter what campus you are a part of. Um, 
you can definitely talk to your advisors about about what it would be um, best to pursue, um, given your major, given your timeline. That's all a discussion for later. Just know that it, it is available to you. So um, this video here, you can click on it later to learn more about the study abroad, funding and opportunities. There are, I believe, like even if you are a part of, let's say, Macaulay Hunter, let's say you find um, a program that you're interested in that is at CUNY, um, that, that's at Queens College you're still able to pursue Macaulay's help, I believe, to try and enroll into that program. So it's nice to have those opportunities across different CUNY campuses as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm so sorry. I wanted to chime in really quickly about the Opportunities Fund because not only can it fund, you know, a study abroad experience in Germany or Tokyo, but you can use it for internships that you do in New York City. I did an internship 30 minutes away from my dorm and I still was able to receive that 1500 because it was unpaid. So I got the great experience of working with a nonprofit. It was PBS at the time and they still helped me kind of support that experience. So it's a really versatile um, facet of going to Macaulay. Yeah, I had the same experience. I did research um, in like in like Queens College or something because I was applying to med school and the research was unpaid. So they paid me with that $1,500. They just said, here, you can just have the $1,500 because you essentially did like an educational experience. Thank you guys. Yeah, I think I remember wanting to go abroad, but because of COVID, um, those restrictions still weren't lifted. So I ended up doing a remote internship with the um, Museum of Natural History, and that ended up being paid for as well. So um, it, you can get creative with what kind of opportunity you want to pursue. It's great that Macaulay is flexible with um, kind of accepting these proposals and allowing you to kind of shape your path towards your interests. So thank you guys for sharing your experiences with that as well. Um, so yes, Macaulay requires New York State residency. You have to be a resident of New York State to apply and attend the um, college for all four years. And the scholarship covers all eight years of um, tuition. Sorry, eight semesters, not eight years. God, that would be terrifying. Okay. Um, so Tamir, you talked about yourself. Um, do we, Francis, do we go over our bios again or? I what? think we rather, I think we have a few questions that we need to sure, answer yeah, yeah. In, the, in the last couple of minutes. I think that would be probably a little sure. more beneficial. Um, just to be conscientious of everybody's time. So it looks like, um, Let's see, what is, somebody asked, what is the best college for computer science majors uh, of the CUNYs? Does anybody know? I mean, I have a little brother. He started at Hunter. He was trying to do computer science and then he switched to Queens. He said the Queens program was better. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in on that. I work at CUNY and actually Baruch College surprisingly has one of the number one computer science programs, but also um, Queens is great. Hunter has a strong one as well and um, City Tech but I don't think City Tech is eligible for Macaulay. Yeah, so I, Baruch and Queens was probably the answer to that because my, my brother didn't like the program they added Hunter for computer science, so he switched to Queens. Um, is there an advantage to getting into Macaulay if you had a sibling there? So I don't think there's necessarily an advantage. They'll probably, um, you could probably mess. I mean, I I can't really answer that, but I, I don't, I think they try to, you know, Look at everybody equally. I have heard of stories of people getting in and they have siblings that were in Macaulay, but I don't know if that affected it. You know, nobody really knows the answer to that. So I'm sorry I can really help with that. But I mean, definitely if there's a sibling, you know, that means you have a good shot of, of, of getting in as well. Um, and then somebody said, I'm confused. We apply for the CUNY through Macaulay. So if we don't get accepted to Macaulay, are we not accepted to CUNY colleges? So let's run through this um, one more time. So essentially, if you want to apply to Macaulay, you submit the CUNY application. It's a special application. Um, in that application, you have to make a choice. If you're applying to Macaulay, you have to choose one campus, Hunter or Queens or Baruch or Brooklyn, whatever. Let's say you choose Hunter. Then they're saying, okay, now which of the CUNY colleges do you want to apply to for the general admission? So you say, okay, I want to apply to Hunter, Baruch, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, all of those separately for the general admission. So then they say, okay, let's evaluate his application for the Macaulay Honors Program. They say, I don't think he's a great fit. We're not gonna accept him to Hunter Macaulay. But then they're gonna say, okay, let's see if he's eligible to be accepted to the regular admission at CUNY. 
So you can still get accepted to Hunter, Queens, Macaulay, I mean, to Hunter or, or Queens or uh, Brooklyn or Baruch in the non-Macaulay honors admission, like in the general admission. So you submit one application for both the Macaulay and the general admission, okay? All right, hopefully that, that clarifies it. How do we find out about specific honors classes and professors provided? Um, I think you can probably uh, look it up on Google, I would guess, is probably the best choice to, to best bet to, to, to go uh, forward with that. Uh, the deadline for financial aid forms we discussed. Um, can you lose the scholarship? Do you need to maintain a certain GPA? I think it's 3.5, right? Uh, Jan and Samaida? I think the first year of freshman year, it's a 3.2, and then sophomore, junior, senior year, it is a 3.5. So it yeah. is important because you have to remember this is a merit-based scholarship, which actually is really beneficial for your resume. When you're applying to a career, they're going to see that this is very prestigious. It's not just need-based. It's based on how hard you worked in classes, but you will need to maintain your GPA. Yeah, so 3.5. And for... Most Macaulay Honors program that uh, is super attainable. Most of my classmates had really high GPA, so 3.5 wasn't a problem. If you don't qualify for Macaulay, will someone tell us about other scholar programs? Um, I'm not sure how that works. Um, you guys know if you don't qualify for Macaulay, do they automatically consider you for other scholarships? Um, I think at Hunter, they do. Um but you might also have to apply separately because each campus has, you know, its own um, like campus specific honors programs, but I'm not entirely sure. So, Daniel yeah. Kaimo, right? He got the uh, Jerry Hunter Scholar, like, cause he went, he went pre-med. So he got that scholarship, Daniel, who's um, at Queller also. Yeah, I have, I have a friend who didn't get into Macaulay and he got this scholarship called the Yellow Scholars. Yeah. And um I think he got it automatically. I think he got, I, I think I'm pretty sure that you get uh, considered automatically if you don't make it into Macaulay. So, but let, yeah. so oh, I'm sorry. Um, with these separate honors programs, you actually do have to apply separately to each one. So Hunter has five of its own scholars programs and then each college has their own special thing. And you do need to apply separately. But if your statistics are in a certain range, they do pretty much kind of accept you because they see that you're a competitive applicant. So the, I guess the answer is yes and no. They consider you sometimes automatically if you're very competitive, but other times you have to reach out and apply for them separately. So definitely, um, I would recommend doing more research outside of this. Um, that, that looks like it was the last question. Does anybody else have any questions you want to unmute or ask, or you can type it in the chat in the last couple of minutes here? Do Hunter Macaulay students get free dorm every year or with some limitations? Do you guys know the answer to that? Um, I believe when I was there, it was just your freshman and sophomore year, but I'm not sure if it's changed. That's how I remember it as well. We got the, as far as I remember, you get the dorm for the first two years. And yeah. I think then after that, it's, uh, do other campuses also offer dorms? Uh, another question in the chat. I don't believe so. I think it's just Hunter. Hunter is special. So that's why Hunter is the, the best in my opinion. Uh, how many... Rounds of interviews at Hunter, who are the people interviewing? So there's, I had one interview at Hunter. Um, the people interviewing, if I remember, I had like a faculty member interview and a senior Macaulay honor student interview me. So it was like two interviewers. Um, Jan, do you remember who interviewed you? I don't, um, but it's always, um, I believe a current faculty member and then uh, some, someone who's an alumni. So yeah. it's, a, yeah. Yeah. And then somebody asked, what are the interviews like? The interviews are just like any other college interview. They ask you, you know, um, what, you know, what do you think you can, you know, tell me about yourself. Uh, what can you offer our program? Why do you want to go to Macaulay? Um, this for that, I would recommend that you definitely do your research separately, uh, and look up kind of a common college interview, questions and have answers prepared for that because uh, we can talk about just interviews for like an hour uh, it's super easy to talk about um do they interview all candidates or just some Macaulay candidates they only interview some candidates because there's so many there's thousands of applications they can't possibly interview everyone so if you get an interview that is already a great sign um so they don't interview everyone but remember it's only in those select four colleges that i talked about so they only have interviews 
um, um, in Hunter, John Jay, Lehman, and College of Staten Island. So if you apply to Queens Macaulay, they don't do any interviews. You just either get accepted or, um, you know, you get accepted or you get rejected. There's no interviews for those other ones. Um, all right. Uh, looks like that was the last question. Does anybody else have any other questions or? Oh, just, one just, more here. Just to close everything up, because it's already 8.05. Um, sure. What advice would each of you give to a first gen? Because um, I think that's really like the audience and that is something that we just want to be so mindful of. And we are so lucky. Our English is good. We are well-spoken. We are so lucky. But in this group, we are children of immigrants. What advice would you give to the future us? <laughs> Can you please start, Samir? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not even a child of immigrant. I'm an immigrant myself. I came here yeah. before high school. Um, I didn't, you know, I obviously had to adapt very much to the new system here in the United States. And I think the biggest advice that I can give people is don't sell yourself short. Don't think that just because you are either whatever, your parents are immigrants, or you're an immigrant, or you didn't have good grades, or you didn't have good extracurriculars. Don't think that that's supposed to limit you. Um and, you know, use everything to your advantage. And in fact, I think that the story of my immigration was the topic of my conversation in all of my interviews. So kind of like turning that weakness into a strength. People really enjoyed listening to these stories. It makes you unique. Uh, it makes you uh, a, a standout applicant that is so much better than these people who are like grew up, you know, for generations here in like Long Island or something that are just boring and, you know, um, so I think that's something that I would definitely recommend. Try to turn your weakness into strength and don't sell yourself short. To Maifa, can you go next? What is your best piece of advice that you can give to the future generations of Macaulay applicants? I would really advise you to focus on one passion or interest you have and really maximize it because it's not all about grades. Grades are extremely important, but your interest and your passions, especially if you come from a background where you didn't have parents who are familiar with American culture or the American school system, finding that one activity, it doesn't need to be an official extracurricular activity. It can be music, it can be art, and really maximizing that and going for it can help you. As a personal story, when I applied to Macaulay, my SAT was a little bit lower than the average. I had a 2100 which was lower than I think Tamir, but I really love writing. So I did journalism in high school and I think that was the key to me getting accepted into this competitive program. So I would definitely advise, you know, finding your passion and not shying away from your background. In addition to what Tamir and Sumaitha just said, I would say that one thing that helped me a lot, not only while I was in Macaulay, but after that as well is seeking out mentors. So my parents were here to support me and cheer me on, but of course, you know, they didn't always have the background, whether it was academically or professionally that I needed to get where I wanted to go. Macaulay has an amazing network of mentors, whether you're pre-med, pre-law, whatever it is, um, you can search up these individuals, send them a message, connect with them on LinkedIn, um, connect with your professors, send them emails, keep up with them, and seek out opportunities for yourself. Um, be active and ask if there is a position for this or if you could create a position for yourself. Don't you know? wait for the last minute and know that people will always be there to help you. They're happy to help you. That's what this type of an educational institution is for. And you will be it will only help you to have as many mentors as possible in as many interests that you have. So that's my advice. I cannot thank these speakers enough. Um, I really just wanna say this is also a very emotional moment because it's very special to really say that, you know, here we are passing the torch and, you know, we've graduated and I finished college and law school and I'm running a business and my family. And I just, I just want, we're, you know, this is all about you. This is all about everyone who's listening right now. It's about you being the next generation of thought leaders, of world leaders. And it all starts with education. 
everything starts with knowledge and knowledge is power. And Macaulay's going to give you a great education. And this is an incredible opportunity. We are winding down this webinar. Um, I want to share with you, this is a very special webinar. This is actually in partnership with the Forest Hills High School Parents Engagement Initiative. And this was presented um, as an you know, amazing opportunity for families to learn, specifically for parents to learn in a format that would be user-friendly. And we worked so hard to make this webinar you know, successful and easy to follow and understand. I wanna share with you, this is a very meaningful moment that we have right now because we're able to convey this information in such a transparent way. We're really lucky. Jan, Tamir, Sumaitha, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this and for doing this on a weeknight when you're so busy with everything else you have going on with school and extracurricular. Thank you to everyone. This is a really special, meaningful opportunity. Um, and I just want to close um, with our biggest gratitude. I also, something I greatly enjoy, and Effie, I will take you off mute in a moment if that's okay with you. I also just want to take a moment to take everyone um, as we're, uh, the three speakers are about to log off, I um, I really want to take a moment to just tell everyone, let's just give a quick thank you. So is that okay, Effie, is your, uh, do you want to quickly chime in for one moment? And then I will also take everyone off mute in a moment. Okay, go ahead, Effie. Sure, I'll, I'll be very quick. I just want to say uh, thank you to all the parents for coming. Um, and uh, as usual, um, you know, these scholar prep seminars have been very useful, informative, and then uh, and really a, a godsend sometimes to some parents at Forces High School who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford um, um, to pay for, and, and this can cost a lot of money to get this type of quality advice about how to apply to colleges. Um, and I want to remind parents that we are running these seminars every week, pretty much every Thursday. Next week, I believe, is the common app. Is that right? Um, yeah, it's, how, a, how it's to, a different topic um, every week, but yeah, we'll send that information over. Right. So, so every week we have a different topic, uh, mostly related to um, how to help you, the parent, get how, how to help the parents improve the chances of their children to get into um, some of the best programs that um, colleges around the country um, can offer. And uh, the Macaulay Tonight was just such an example. Uh, so thank you to... Um, all the presenters. Um, thank you to Queller Prep and thank you parents for yeah. coming. And uh, uh, Francine, please uh, take it from here. Something that I very much enjoy doing, let's take everyone off mute and we're gonna count to three. We're going to say thank you. So let's count to three. We're gonna go and we're going to say thank you out loud to our amazing guest speakers. Okay, ready everyone? One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank, you. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good. This was so Thank you. Amazing. We learned so much. This was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you, what? everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Everyone Great you rest are. of your night. You were very helpful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You learned so Thank much. You very much. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. Informative beyond words. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. Good night. Good Thank night, you for everyone. joining me. Thank you, everyone. Super informative. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Hey, everybody.